Making a list of the top 10 storms in the solar system is kind of a strange thing to do. It's not really clear to me what is a storm and what isn't a storm. A lot of the so-called storms in the solar system appear to be upper atmospheric features and don't really impact the solid surface. And yet on Earth, it's really our experience on the ground that leads us to determine whether it is a storm or not and how strong it is. For example, on Earth we have huge jet streams circulating the pole, but while these are giant vortices, the very strong winds are far above the surface, so we don't consider it one giant storm. So with all this in mind, I'm calling this video the Top 10 Storms in the Solar System version 1.0, so that following further comments and thoughts, a potential later updated video will be version 1.1 and so on with improved future lists. So without further ado, let's get started with uh, number 10. Perhaps the solar system's most Earth-like body, Saturn's largest moon, Titan, has an atmosphere with clouds, rain, and bodies of liquid on its rocky surface. Titan is too cold to have a water cycle, but instead it has a methane cycle, since methane has a melting point of minus 182 degrees Celsius. According to an article in Nature, severe convective storms may occur with updrafts of 70 kilometers per hour with heavy methane rainfall rates comparable to flash flooding events on Earth. There is also some suggestion that unusual windstorms may be responsible for the 90 meter dunes of Titan, since they actually form in the opposite direction of the prevailing east to west winds. The dunes are not sand dunes, but are some kind of unknown viscous material. Not enough is known about Titan's weather to put it any higher on this list, but this number 10 spot is allocated for the potential of a severe methane rainstorm. Venus is hell. Its atmosphere is made up almost entirely of carbon dioxide, and it's got a runaway greenhouse effect that creates surface temperatures of around 460 degrees Celsius which make them the highest planetary surface temperatures in the solar system, and hot enough to melt lead. The winds at the surface are very slow, but the air is incredibly dense, being about 90 times heavier than Earth's surface, meaning that even weak winds would exert a great force. Over its polar regions are huge polar vortices with 65 kilometer thick clouds of sulfuric acid. Its south polar vortex is about 2,000 to 3,000 kilometers across, and the winds in the upper levels are almost uh, around 400 kilometers per hour. The vortex is constantly changing structure, and it's considered one of the most variable polar vortices in the solar system. Another cool thing about the vortex is that, un is that like an intense hurricane on Earth, it appears to have an eye in the center. Infrared imagery allows us to see the temperatures of the cloud tops and it reveals that those temperatures are higher in the center of the vortex, as shown by the red warm area in this image. This indicates that the cloud tops are about 8 kilometers lower in the center of the eye, which is a bit of a dent in the 65 kilometer thick clouds outside of the eye. It's impressive, but we can question whether this is technically really a storm given that it's primarily in the upper atmosphere. Number 8 we return to our home planet for a small but savage storm. I'm putting the supercell thunderstorm that produced the longest lived and longest tracked tornado on Earth, known as the Tri-State Tornado of 18th of March 1925. I can't find any evidence of comparable winds on the solid or liquid surfaces of the other planets, so an Earth tornado deserves a place on this list. The tornado first developed out of a supercell thunderstorm in Missouri. It grew into a large and strong wedge tornado. This picture is a more recent wedge example. It proceeded to destroy the small town of Annapolis, Missouri. Murfreesboro, Illinois was the worst hit. This picture shows the damage the tornado did to Longfellow School where tragically 17 children were killed. 
The total known length of all the tornadoes from this one storm was around 510 kilometers, and it lasted for five and a half hours. But it seems likely that a 280 kilometer segment and then a 243 kilometer segment were two different tornadoes. What is really crazy is that either of these two tornadoes appears to have a longer track than any other tornado on record. So this one supercell thunderstorm may have been responsible for the two longest track tornadoes on record. It's impossible to determine the precise wind speeds in the tri-state tornadoes, but based on the damage done it was rated an F5 with winds of over 261 to 318 miles per hour. That's 420 kilometers per hour to 512 kilometers per hour. These types of winds shred houses from their foundations and throw cars hundreds of meters through the air, described as automobile-sized missiles. The Fujita scale succinctly sums up the damage by stating, incredible phenomena will occur. Mars is mostly a dry rocky desert where dust storms are common. Small dust devil vortices have been observed both from space and from land instruments. A number seven though is one of the dust storms that became so large that it covered most of the planet and ended up lasting for many weeks. About every three Martian years, which is five and a half Earth years, a huge dust storm will grow so large that it encircles the entire planet. And this is what happened in 2001. In June 2001, a dust storm was spotted brewing in the Hellas Basin a 9 km deep impact crater in Mars's southern hemisphere. On 27th of June, the storm exploded and began rapidly expanding. By early July, the dust storm had become a global event, with the dust now spread across the entire planet. These giant storms tend to occur in the Martian summer for the southern hemisphere, but the winds are not exceptionally strong, with top speeds estimated at just under 100 km an hour. Not only are the winds not really that strong, but the atmosphere is only about 1% as dense as Earth, which means that the force exerted by these winds would be much less on an astronaut wander wandering on the surface. While the winds may not be hazardous, the extent of the dust can change the radiational balance of, of the atmosphere across the entire planet and can raise the atmospheric temperature by up to 30 degrees Celsius. Only one spacecraft in the history of spaceflight has ever made a close approach to Uranus, and that was Voyager, Voyager 2. When Voyager 2 passed within 81,000 kilometers of the cloud tops of Uranus on 24th of January 1986, it saw a planet seemingly less interesting than the other. It was a giant bluish sphere with few discernible features. However, dark spots have been observed on Uranus before Voyager 2 passed by in sketches. And since Voyager 2's visit, a further number of dramatic features have been observed from Earth and from the Hubble te Telescope. Huge areas of popcorn convection consisting of methane crystal convective clouds have been seen, but more impressive have been the massive spots that are thought to be enormous vortices in the upper atmosphere. The vortices appear to be related to Uranus's very long seasons that can last for decades. As sunlight hits the atmosphere after a very long winter, it may stir back to life, triggering these storms. These are the coldest storms in the solar system, with temperatures down to minus 218 degrees Celsius. Uranus also has drastic seasons since its axis of rotation is tilted 98 degrees on its side. For a specific storm, I'll put the dark spot of 2006, when the Hubble telescope observed this giant dark vortex about 3,000 kilometers wide. The figure for the wind on Uranus that I have is 900 kilometers per hour, but I'm not sure at this point if it refers to winds in the dark spot. In 2014, a number of white spots, one that was exceptionally bright, were spotted on Uranus. These may be bigger storms underneath the bright high clouds.
At number five, I've put Jupiter's famous red spot. It could easily be placed higher, but just based on its prominence and fame. It is a giant anticyclonic vortex that has been spinning for hundreds of years and shows little sign of letting up. Its scale is scary, being large enough to swallow three Earths. At its widest, it is 40,000 kilometers wide, and so large that it takes about six Earth days to perform a full rotation. The winds around the edge of the spot peak at 430 km an hour, but are much weaker within the spot interior. And the spot actually changes color quite a lot, from various shades of red to almost disappearing visually. Unlike quite a few of the other storms on this list, the great red spot is driven by Jupiter's internal energy. And according to theory, the great red spot's long life may be due to other eddies getting sucked in and adding energy to keep it spinning. But it appears there are still a lot of mysteries surrounding this probably the most prominent atmospheric feature in the solar system. Saturn's more uniform appearance compared to Jupiter belies the fact that it can also have some giant storms. An example was this storm known as the Dragon Storm of 2004. The Dragon Storm was a giant thunderstorm that shot out radio bursts from lightning that were observed. There have been other storms detected in the same location, suggesting that hidden below may lurk a deep, mysterious, longer-lived storm. But while the Dragon Storm was large, it paled in comparison to a storm that developed late in 2010. The earliest image of the storm was from 5th of December 2010. This small feature was about two-thirds of the way north of the equator. It was about 1,800 kilometers wide and marked the birth of something truly humongous. NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected lightning on the same day. The storm grew over the course of months and eventually it came to encircle the planet with a storm width of 300,000 kilometers, some 7.5 times the distance around Earth's equator. It became the largest and longest lasting storm ever observed on Saturn. Its active phase finally ended in June 2011, but it left turbulent clouds that lingered on for many months. Worth a mention here are the bizarre goings on at Saturn's poles. At the North Pole, a hexagon, six-sided jet stream circulates, discovered first by Voyager in the early 80s. Clouds here are moving at about 480 kilometers per hour. The Cassini mission in 2016 discovered that this hexagon actually has changed color while they've been observing it between 2012 and 2016. Things are different at the South Pole where there is another vortex but not hexagonal. It appears to have a giant eye in its center. The clouds have been observed to be moving as fast as 530 km per hour in this vortex. One of the key features that we use to define the severity of a storm on Earth is how it is experienced at the planet's surface. For this reason, it could be argued that storms on Earth are more severe than on most of the other planets because surface wind speeds can be stronger than on the other planets and moons that have clearly defined surfaces. Anyway, at number three, I'm plonking perhaps the greatest tropical cyclone in our records, Typhoon Tip. On October 4th, 1979, a tropical cyclone developed near Ponape that went on to become the largest and possibly the most intense tropical cyclone ever recorded. By 12th of October, the storm had intensified into a super typhoon with a central sea level pressure of 870 millibars, the lowest ever recorded in a tropical cyclone. Tip was remarkable also because it was the largest tropical cyclone ever, with a wind diameter of 2,220 kilometers, about half the size of the USA, with extremely strong one minute sustained surface winds estimated at 305 kilometers an hour. Other tropical cyclones since have roughly matched tip, TIP's intensity. However, TIP's combination of intensity and size remain unmatched. Reliably determining the strongest winds in a tropical cyclone can be tricky because they're usually out in the empty ocean where no one is around to measure the winds directly. The strongest reliably measured winds in a tropical cyclone were actually observed in Hurricane Patricia in the eastern Pacific, when at 12th coordinated universal time on October 23rd, winds were measured at 345 kilometers an hour.
First observed by the Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1989, this 13,000 km wide giant anticyclonic storm was actually relatively cloud free in the interior. The clouds are made up of methane and the storm was in Neptune's southern hemisphere. The high white clouds around the edge are methane ice crystal clouds forced up and cooled by the dynamics of the storm. These clouds were observed to change their appearance over the course of hours. The dark spot itself may be a giant eye-like feature where there is a window to a cloud deck lower in the atmosphere. So why is this higher in the list than Jupiter's or Saturn's humongous cyclones? Well, the great dark spot has astoundingly strong winds. In fact, they are considered to be the strongest in the solar system at 2,400 kilometers per hour. That's 1,500 miles per hour. That makes these winds twice as fast as the speed of sound. Voyager 2 also revealed that the great dark spot varied significantly in size during the brief flyby. It's not clear how long the great dark spot spotted by Voyager 2 lasted. However, much later, a different dark spot was imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope in November 1994, while the original spot had disappeared. This new one was a mirror image of the first spot, as it was located at a similar latitude, but this time in the opposite hemisphere. And if you're wondering about the blurry quality of this image, bear in mind that it was imaged from a distance of 4.5 billion kilometers. It seems that Neptune's dark spots come and go over the course of years, with another dark spot seen in 2016 by Hubble. Given that the Sun is itself the source of energy for some of the storms on other planets, and virtually all on Earth, it should not be surprising that the number one slot on this list goes to a storm on the Sun. On September 25th, 2011, a spectacular event was witnessed developing from a solar structure called a prominence. It was a mega twister-like formation, about five times as wide as the size of Earth. The feature's hot gases gyrated at speeds of up to 300,000 km an hour, with temperatures up to 2 million degrees Celsius. I have found it stated that solar tornadoes can often uh, occur at the root of huge coronal mass ejections. The solar tornadoes drag a winding magnetic field and electric currents into the high solar atmosphere. It is thought possible that the magnetic field and currents play a key role in driving the coronal mass ejection. Here is some other confusing blurb. Vortex flows concentrate the plasma and magnetic field on the surface and twist the magnetic field lines into filament barbs. Magnetic field lines in the filament spine become twisted to form a flux rope. As vortices continuously twist magnetic field lines, the system may become un unstable and erupt. So anyway, uh, in summary, a tornado five times wider than the Earth spinning at 300,000 km an hour with temperatures of up to 2 million degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, I think this one deserves its place at the top of this list. So there you go, that's my first list. Please let me know in the comments if you know of other potential candidate storms for future lists like this. And thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you would like to watch more stuff like this. Cheers.